Hello to everybody. As I mentioned in a previous tutorial, I want to talk about the endless discussion about whether a Mac or a PC is better for your work, but as well about the sidekick called Hackintosh, in which some people see or hope for a golden solution by not being able to afford a real Mac or when they just want to build their own up-to-date system. From a professional point of view, it is totally okay to work on both systems. I personally prefer the Mac OS X, but when using Cubase, and that's most of the time, I'm working on a Windows 7 machine, because it's running a bit smoother due to the Windows ASIO audio engine. Some big composers are working on Mac, some others, as Chunky XL, are working on Windows machines, but having a Mac as a backup system for using Pro Tools. Macs are very expensive, but as well very powerful and stable system and for many years they stood for the professional working tool in some industries like in the music biz. And if you are entering recording stages, sound studios and composer studios on the whole world, in most of them you will still find the big aluminium case and in some others even the little trash can. But Windows machines today are at least equally powerful and you can keep them much more easier and less expensive up to date. The reason for Macs being so expensive is their small and more exclusive list of components used in their system. Buying the processor of the actual Mac Pro separately in Amazon costs lots of money and you can understand the high price. But you can build amazing machines for Windows for much less and they are doing great as well. So why should you buy a Mac? I think it is pretty simple to answer. If your workflow is much better on the Mac OS, you use it. And the most obvious reason, beside being an amazingly stable and secure system to work with, there are some programs, like Logic X, that are only working with the Mac OS. So if you want or have to work with such kind of programs, you have to buy a Mac. Or not? I hopefully say may no. There's a chance a Hackintosh system may work for you. This is a Windows based computer with a slightly modified OS X to tell the OS the computer is an actually Mac and not a normal Windows machine. It is a very interesting way to be able using the Apple OS without spending thousands of dollars. But it is more for those who love to dive into hardware and software issues and are not afraid to fail. There are some certain points to think about and it's tough to create a really workable and stable Hackintosh system. But it's possible. Because I was in the need to use some OS X specific programs and I am not able to afford a new Mac, nor did I want to spend thousands of dollars on an at least 5 years old machine, I planned in building my own Hackintosh. About the success and the way to do it, you will find another tutorial very soon. Ok, so now we don't know at all which system we should use, because everything seems cool. And the good news is, yes it is, so use what you want, what you can afford and what fits your needs the best. But what are the typical specs a computer should have? If you build a computer by scratch, I would at least buy a 6 core Intel CPU, 32GB of RAM, better 64, a good graphic card, so you are able to use 4K displays, and two 480GB SSDs plus and two to four terabit HDD. As already mentioned, the graphic chip is especially for the usage of multiple and bigger screens and you will be happy to have spent this plus hundred dollar when you are able or in the need of a bigger display. The 32GB of memory are a massive relief when working with a lot of memory intense libraries and a lot of the big ones like Berlin Strings and Hollywood Strings are very RAM intense. So always good to have a little bit more, it's not that expensive as well. If you are able, take 64 and you will have enough RAM for a long time. The disk space is separated in a 480GB SSD for your system drive and your basic installed components. Keep 
them mostly clean from libraries and other stuff. For libraries, you have your second SSD and the big HDD. The second SSD should be used for the RAM intense libraries. In my case, all my orchestral tool stuff is placed on the SSD and most of the other libraries on the HDD. Because of the speed increase of the SSD, they can interact faster with the RAM and it's not necessary to load a very big part of the samples in the RAM, so this combination allows you to use your RAM more efficiently. And then to the processor. Long time I had the belief that the more cores the better would count for an audio machine. But it is not always true. Some DAWs, like Cubase, are more efficient or can only use a maximum number of 6 to 8 cores. So it's important to have less than 10 to 12 cores, but these with more power. A 12 core CPU may have 12 multiple 2.6 cores, but when your DAW is only using 6 of them, a standard 6 core with 3 multiple 3.3 will generate much better results. You see where this is going. More is always more, but not always better. For the rest, when not buying a ready-built PC or Mac, take care of a big PC case for good ventilation and as well having a silent case and enough silent fans. For more information, I added some links in the description. I hope this will help you on the difficulties of finding your perfect workspace. The most important thing to say, whether Mac or PC, you can create amazing music on both systems and the only limit are your own borders. I think this is the most important part to remember. Have fun and good luck.